Continuum is a totally different ball game. It uh, it puts SG one in an alternate timeline. Ball, our our favorite baddie, played by Cliff Simon, who's just awesome. So we're excited to have him back. Uh, takes the Stargate essentially um, when it's being brought over from Egypt to America, and hijacks the boat and sends it up to the Arctic and crashes it there, and we end up coming through the Stargate in the Arctic in this boat and we're thrown into an alternate timeline where SG-1 doesn't exist, the Stargate program doesn't exist and we're in a race to try to convince the world that um, that we need to go back, that we need to get the Stargate operational and, and go back and change the timeline. It's the grandfather paradox. Do we fix it? We have to fix it. Otherwise, we're lost and we're stuck on a, in a timeline or an alternate reality where we don't have the lives that we're used to. Uh, our characters are stranded on a, a ship. Actually, Daniel's there too, but he gets frostbite, so he's sort of stuck on the ship and gets rescued. Um, and we end up coming and walking along the ice, and we're thrown into this 1939 Arctic gear because that's all we could find on the ship, and we, uh, we wander the ice. And so we shot scenes... Um, with us walking huge scope scenes, helicopter shots and long lenses as the sun was sitting. I mean, absolutely visually stunning. And then, of course, we get rescued by Colonel O'Neill because um, Richard's in the, in the second movie, which is great. And uh, we get, uh, actually, our, our transport off the ice is a uh, nuclear submarine, <laughs> you know, whatever's handy, uh, that comes crashing up through the ice and, and we uh, climb on board. <laughs> Now, the Arctic itself, when you get there, the, the first day there, uh, all I could think was, what the hell am I doing here? Um, when you step outside, uh, the ambient temperature was 35 below, with wind chill as much as 55 below. That's not including gusts. So when you step into that, within 30 seconds, you feel your flesh freezing, and you realize you're in an environment that could kill you quickly, and it, it's overwhelming. After a few days on, on the ice, you settle into it, and after a week, I didn't want to leave. We were completely isolated. You're de completely dependent upon the people you're around. We were, our lives were in, in each other's hands, and uh, it was the most remarkable place I've ever been. W when you get cold in the Arctic, uh, once you get cold, you're in deep trouble. Uh, you know, you don't want to get behind the weather. But I was walking with Amanda. Amanda and I were doing this long walk and talk across the ice, and you could hear the ice with the squeaking hollow sound. There are air, bu air bubbles and pockets, and below that is just ocean. And the ice we were walking on, we're not really sure how thick it is. We're not sure exactly where the fissures are. And we're doing this helicopter shot, and we're just walking out on the ice. And we were, t we were talking about how, how would you, how, isn't it amazing that we're doing this job? No actors in Hollywood I can ever imagine. You see these glacier shots. It's usually second unit. And we're out there doing our walk and talk with a helicopter shot in this vast ice expanse uh, in these harsh conditions. And you think, how do we get so lucky to be here? But when you're actually working there, the stuff that you do as an actor, like hitting your marks, like remembering your lines, you have to be on a kind of automatic. You have to know that inside out and backwards. There's no time to ask questions. There's no time to adjust shots. The nuclear submarine is going to come through the ice behind you. You have to know your craft. And there's really, you're really not thinking about that. You're not thinking about the acting. What you're thinking about most of the time is, damn, it's called a better face this way. And while you're standing waiting for a shot two and a half hours on the ice in 40, 50 below, uh, you concentrate on staying warm. And then they call action and you do your thing. I never in a million years would have been able to go up and film on an ice floe in the Arctic Circle. I don't know how many people that have. I don't know how many people on Earth have had the opportunity to actually go up there, period. It's a very small group considering how large our population is. But uh, to actually film up there, phenomenal experience. Unbelievable. Freezing cold, on the alert for polar bears all the time, for real, which is kind of kooky. Couldn't leave camp without a guy that had a gun and a, uh, a walkie. Yeah, you weren't allowed to leave camp. Um, and, you know, our safety meetings revolved around things like looking up for frostbite on each other. You had frostbite buddies. And um, making sure that if the submarine was coming up through the ice and you felt it move, you knew which direction to run. Uh, and being on the lookout for polar bears. Those were our safety meetings before each scene, which I just thought was hilarious, kind of. 
in a, you know, life-threatening sort of scary way. Yeah, but it was awesome. It was beautiful. It was absolutely magical up there.